So very good afternoon to everyone and welcome to another episode of Design Meetup powered by IXTF Kerala and co-sponsored by Experion Technologies. I'd like everyone uh, to, you know, who's joined us right now to just let us know what role you're working in, whether you're an aspiring student, uh, you know, what role you want to start your career in, uh, you know, why you're here, to, you know, what interests you about this topic. So please feel free uh, to keep the chat uh, window buzzing. So to talk a little about the topic today, styling on the web has been moving fast and bringing a lot of rich features for container-based styles and layouts. So the year 2022 uh, is set to be one of CSS, CSS's greatest years in terms of both the features and cooperative browser feature releases. And the new features of 2022 will help web developers in writing CSS in a more effective way. So our speaker today, Megha Uday Kumar, who's a software engineer, will be taking us through the new features of CSS. To talk a little about Mega. So she has over two years of experience as a software engineer working in front-end development. And when she was in college, HTML styling is something that interested her. And that's what brought her to this field. She is from Coimbatore, which is known mostly as an educational hub and even a commercial hub. And when she's not working, she loves listening to music. She enjoys gardening. She is a movie buff and can go on watching movies back to back. Crime and action thriller movies are what keeps her hooked. I asked her what, what you know, just tell me a quote that inspires you or, you know, what do you look, you know, that defines what you think. She told me, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. And what a lovely quote that is. So for the ease of a better experience, we have muted the audience mics during the session. Please put your questions in the chat window. And we do have an exclusive Q&A session after the webinar where the audience can interact and discuss. A recorded version of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. For those who are just joining us, welcome to State of CSS 2022 by Mega Udaikar. Over to you, Mika. Yes, thank you, Vandana, for this uh, wonderful uh, introduction for me. <clears throat> uh, welcome all. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about the topic called State of CSS 2022. Uh, it is completely new under for me as well as uh, everyone who present here. Uh, so today, we are going to talk about the uh, recent features they have introduced by Google I.O. And for the main purpose, why they have introduced so many futures means their ultimate aim to implement these futures, which is some things fresh in 2022 and some things which in beyond the 2022. So you can be able to see some list of items which is fresh in 2022 and 2022 and beyond. So in this section, what I'm going to briefly introduce about three main items. One is a responsive typography, another one is a has to code, another one is a select menu. So before going to start into the main section, I'm going to tell about a short uh, description about each futures, uh, why they have introduced these futures particularly and what are the new uh, things they have introduced in this future send goal we can discuss right now that. so first one is a 2022 browser compatibility what does mean with the browser compatibility means and what they have introduced as a new future means nothing but the speed of the styling in the browser so uh, comparing to the other browser specification later on 2022 they might feel that it's a little bit slow comparing doing some other stylings in the web codes as well as in the browser console elements and all these stuff. So they have improved some time, some bit of styling speeds in the browser. So it, they have introduced it as a 2022 browser compatibility. So other than that, at layer specification means that it is a styling component which refers towards the CSS styling. Uh, it is refers to the CSS specificity which is the lowest specificity and higher specificity it is also related to the browser grid only 
so next we are going to talk about the subgrid future uh, basically before the subgrid there is a grid so if there is a parent grid means uh, the child grid will not accept it as a parent grid why because it means the developers who are used to align those items in the css it much difficult as a grid comparing with the parent and child grid so only google has introduced it as a subgrid so by using the subgrid position we can easily able to denote the child which is a parent for that grid so it is mainly useful for that specification grid purpose so the add container specification denotes for what means uh for before the art container the screen will respond to the whole size of the view uh, whole size of the uh, view port width but after art container what they have included means it particularly specifying some parent element containing with the specific size of view port so they have added it as a new feature called as an art container so uh, in great year 2022 why they are saying it is a great year for a css means there is a lot of color properties they have recently introduced other than that some functions related to javascript or an html tag you can comparatively see lot of color functions they have added uh, like that hwb is a q whiteness and blackness function color mix hch color contrast relate to color syntax gradient color space ancient it's it's everything related to the color purpose uh, some of thing which is ordered related to the rgb but something is related to that something special lch and all it's more related to the color construct function it is uh, they have introduced the default color pattern and all so you can refer all those color uh, symptoms or uh color related stuffs you have been interested both the developers or designer means you can go through all those links you can definitely get a lot of color properties including in this so uh, at last in the color font p1 means they have introduced the font styling which is compared with the color so we can also able to color those fonts uh, by using an emoji type it's completely new under for me by by viewing those uh, features i'm not uh, completely briefly seen about color fonts even but it is an interesting topic and it is a depth topic also to refer on that so under that that viewport unit variants uh, later upon uh, before a viewport unit variants we can call it as a viewport you put height and viewport width we can call it as a vh and v width but due to some future comparison what they have uh, included means Uh, viewport minimum height viewport minimum uh, with viewport minimum uh, maximum width maximum height like that they have included with the variable extension so it is completely new to us they have adding some variable after that adding the variable they have including it as a v uh, v max of height max of width like that so it is also completely new for the css so uh, uh, the has should occur we are going to discuss about the later section uh art scope the art from the art scope and all it is going to be developed in future which is we can be able to accept accept in 2022 last or we can accept in uh 2023 starting so and that time they will refer it as a art scope which is fresh in 2023 so this is the difference and this is the Uh, they are model how they are uh, introducing the new future is like that in the google io so it is mainly they have divided into a part of 6 months and 6 months gap in the 6 months it will be a fresh of some uh, new feature and in the end of that one it is going to be a beyond so on that section we are going to see at a art scope art scope name mainly the what is mean by art scope it is going to be as a globally usable purpose so that purpose only they have introduced at a art scope and another one the responsive typography we are going to discuss in the later section it is going to be a brief one uh, next we comments we see art media art custom media media query ranges all those are under to the, under to the custom media queries what is mean by custom media we are all know that media queries which is going to be limit those ranges uh, between some uh, some width and between some width, maximum and minimum so by using and customize uh, a custom media we can customize that later upon we have introduced that art media screen with some amount of 
uh, some uh, number with a variable 300 pixel next next the generation changes into uh, the size of the pixel which is greater than or equal to the max with the condition changed to that next the condition changed to with an and on or condition next we are going to the step into the custom media so we can customize those media queries which is related to what uh, within any number of units so they have introduced as a custom media uh, the scroll start the snap target the snap changing snap changes is related to all this related to the javascript functions they have introduced for some and even handling purposes and for some changing the scrolls and for changing and removing some of the stylings for them they have included a small number of uh, uh, in futures they have included in the also things. Uh, so next we are going to the select menu. This is also we are going to see about in the later section. So now I can tell you why I specifically choose the topic responsive typography as a front end developer. So wh why the what is the responsive typography means? It mainly able to focus and display the width correctly on all the size of the whole viewport width, right? So as a front-end developer, we might face some struggle in between. Uh, like if you are going to change the font size uh, related to some media queries, means we have to search for that media queries, we have to change. Uh, what is the sense? Uh, if there is a small website containing a small number of uh, web components, it means it will be easy for the developers uh, to go to the particular code number of lines and we can able to it. What number of? What if else if you are going for the large number of uh, large websites containing a large number of uh, web components means it, uh, definitely it will be difficult for the front end developers to adjust all those trend all those uh, font sizes in all those media queries in all web components. So what is the solution to avoid all those uh, problems means we are using that modular scale. So by using modular scaling, what we are going to achieve means uh, uh, the number of coding lines we can able to reduce it and we can also able to reduce that time complexity what we are running in the coding process. So in the next slide, we are going to see what are the methods we are going to use for this uh, uh, modular scaling methods to our those properties. Uh, mainly, there are two methods. Um, the whole method what we are following is a uh, media query. By media, by using a media query, we just uh, customize the font size. It will be a normal font size. And by media query, we just customizing the font size based on the media query width. So what is so what is we be the another method is that is a two types of method. One is a clamp and as well as a multiplier. Uh, what does mean by that clamp means the clamp is a, just a function. It's a clamp function. So only it is naming as a clamp method. It is one of the advanced approach to a responsive typography consists of using a clamp function with the CSS custom properties. So <clears throat> the clamp function itself we can also customize those CSS properties. So whenever there is an opportunity to customize some CSS properties means it, is, it will be a great opportunity for the developers to do all those customizes. Uh, right. So uh, the main thing is a customized property. We will be using a clamp. Another one is a multiplier. It is also a customizable. It is the difference between means we are just injecting a variable into multiplier. Uh, in the clamp, we are going to be included as a value. So in the later, we can see what is the difference between this clamp and multiplier and what will be very useful if we use the clamp or multiplier, how we are going to use that clamp function, uh, in what range we have to define it and all, uh, we will see that. So uh, this is the clamp function. Uh, we can see how we are going to define it. In a clamp function, which is ranging between the upper and lower bound, it is between some of the value which is upper and which is the lower bound. So what, what does mean be the upper and lower bound? It will normally range to the maximum as well as the minimum. As well as the minimum, the maximum. It is a range specified to that itself. So how we are going to define it means by using some three kinds of parameters. It is nothing but the minimum value as well as the referred value as well as the maximum value what we are going to allow that one. So uh, it is normally separated by the commas. It is uh, the syntax for that. We have to separate it by the commas. What will be the minimum value, preferred value and the maximum value. So that is the thing. So how uh, how it will be taken means uh, we can able to work, uh, include any type of variance like 
frequency angle time percentage number integer you can allow anything so what will be the minimum value if you are going to be included in a clamp function what will be the minimum value and how we have to define it under the what comparison we have to define it using the minimum value means is nothing but the, it is the most negative value compared to the another two values another two values nothing but the preferred value and the maximum value the preferred value is going to be the hero for that it is the key for the minimum and the maximum value so we are going to set it as a preferred value the minimum value which is the lower bound layer uh, range which is used to allow those variables we can also set it also negative values too so next the preferred value which is going to be the middle one as long as the result between the maximum and the minimum so comparing with the maximum and the minimum values they are going to be highlighted in as the middle one so it is going to be preferred value so what else to be the maximum value means uh, the maximum value which is the largest value to which the property can be assigned to the preferred value which is always greater than to the upper bound level so uh, comparing with a simple syntax it is to be a minimum value preferred value and the maximum value we can see some example demo, demo for a clamp function in the later of after discussing with the multiplier function too so in the multiplier function what we are going to do means uh, okay we can i can explain that example how we are going to do a comparison between the min max and clamp uh, comparison so we can be able to use the clamp function in the three ways called minimum value preferred value as well as the maximum value so you can able to see in the slide example in the body uh, containing a, a minimum value of 1000 pixel having a calculation of 70 percentage plus 100 pixel so the body element with the set type to be a minimum with of 1000 pixel unless the result of cals is 70 percentage plus 100 pixel this normally is less than the 1000 pixel in which case it will be set to the value instant so the minimum allows you to set to to the maximum value so the we can see the minimum value is uh, cal c 70 percentage plus 100 pixel so it is going to be minimum value so it automatically consists as a maximum value so you can also see in the paragraph that containing the maximum value of 1.2 rem plus 1.2 viewport width Uh, what is the difference that min and max having means the font size is set to be maximum of 1.2 rem and 1.2 viewport this means the font size will be set to as a 1.2 rem initially unless the computed value of 1.2 viewport which is greater than uh, 1.2 rem obviously you can see the 1.2 rem is lesser than the 1.2 viewport so it is said to be a value instant called as maximum so maximum allows to set to be a minimum value so here the minimum value is 1.2 rem in the body tag you can see the maximum value is a 1000 pixel so in the next section we are going to a heading tag in heading tag we have a mixture of minimum value preferred value comma maximum value so we having a set of combination for all so in this scenario how we are going to define it mean um this means the font size will be set to be as a starting of 1.8 rem until the computer value becoming to the 2.5 viewport width so it just computing with the preferred value then the preferred value will compute to the maximum value then it will be have a comparison which one is a maximum value like that so uh, in that case until the computer to point becomes the greater than that of 1.8 rem surely at this point the font size will become actually 2.5 viewport with computer value becomes will be greater than the 2.8 rem means yes it is definitely greater than the 2.8 rem so at this point it is said to be as a 2.8 rem so the clamp function will always refer to as the this minimum and the maximum value uh, uh, it is basically defined as the uh, property called minimum and maximum uh, comparison so we can also uh, define it with any type of mathematical operations too so that will be mathematical operation like plus addition division multiplication like any type of mathematical operation we can define so mainly uh, in cas function we are using some mathematical expression means that's involving some percentages for width or height or a table columns or a table column groups or a table rows rows it it may be anything we are defining with a calc function 
so a uh, better it is preferred to be a nest of maximum and minimum function as a expression value right so in which case the inner ones are treated as the simple parenthesis the expressions are a full of mathematical expression so you can use directly addition subtraction multiplication and division without using the class function itself but if you using the class function it will just calculated by using without class function also we can do some kind of uh, addition subtraction and all Uh, make sure we have to be as a space that is as operations also can can be included. So the it will it we can be call it as a parenthesis uh, operation. Often time we can also use it with the min and max operations also. So to all together in clamp function you can use any type of mathematical operation with any type of comparison min and max and preferred value. So this is the main advantage we are having in the clamp function. Uh, next we are going to see as a multiplier so what is difference between the multiplier and the clamp so we have see that in the clamp we are going to be defined as a minimum preferred and maximum this is the key for that so it will also be work on under on that so if it is a multiplier means what it will do if a multiplier variable of for the font size and only to increase the value for the multiplier as i said previous uh, the multiplier is just by injecting a Uh, injecting a variable onto the media queries, and we are going to be declare on that variable anyway. Um, so if we declare this media query, we declare that variable at one time means by using that one time we can use it in a, any type of media queries. So if we uh, want to modify in in a future means if we use it to modify in one step means it will able to modify in all media queries. So it is the main advantage comparing with the uh, older method. so now we can see how we are going to uh, declare those methods so the first step is we going to declare as a variable you can be able to define it as a normal variable containing an hyphen hyphen text variable or hyphen hyphen font variable you this you can declare a variable and we have to set it as a default as a one for starting in the second step we have to increase this multiplier value uh if they also increase the multiplier value means it, it will affect that media query and and by unless by doing in the media queries we just modifying it in a text variable this is the difference so the last step is we have to declare our font size but this time we are using a class function uh so in this also we are can you able to use the class function compared with the uh, class function too um so at the same thing uh, compared to the old method in this method also there will be a uh, core number of lines will be get shortened as well as it is easy to modify those lines if those lines if we modify means we can able to use that line for any selectors or pseudo codes or break points we can able to use those like uh, those lines number of codes so this is the main thing uh, related to clamp and multiplier um so as it it is easy to maintain on modify also so now we are we can able so now i can stop sharing my screen and i can uh, <clears throat> show you how the code is working and how we are going to define and all so i think this is the one this is the one for the multiplier how we are going to be declare as a text variable as i said we are going to define as a one this is going to be considered as a root element something so we are going to define as a variable come with a constant number of one so on the next side we are defining as a media query we just for an example we going to min with of some values in that value we are going to inject those uh, uh take those variables and the classes into this by injecting the uh, font size by default we are changing into 1.5 so how we are going to reuse this means for example if you are if you are working in a h1 tag means we can simply uh, use some cat function or if not else means you can directly include those variables so if you are including this variable means directly uh if you want to change something means you directly come and change into the media queries until then you have to change into the uh, whole web components it will be easy to modify at the one step 
so this is the main thing and the main main advantage related to the old method so it is a time saving uh, uh, confirmation uh, to reduce all some complexity and the number of code lines will be get decreased so this is the main thing we have to define on that and this is the method to declare also so by using this we can <clears throat> define with the custom media queries and we can do n number of variables combining with an uh, some specific concept this one is some for a multiplier and another one is for a clamp function Uh, we can defined with the clamp of some variable minimum and a uh, value for a preferred value with the maximum value as as it so if not we are going to define means we can define here it is simply so if you are going to change here or here means it will affect directly into the media query by defining into the values so uh, minimum value we can set into the variable something and we can define it as a Uh, some number of units will refer to the minimum value, preferred value, and the maximum value. Same, it will be repeated to the n number of times related to the media queries. So this is the one we are going. We are we seen in the uh, section about this media queries and how it is going to be and all those stuffs. Uh, next, we are going to talk about uh, the. this is the end for this response to typography next we are going to talk about the topic called and uh, has to occur ah yes before that we are going to talk about the browser compatibility for that uh, response to typography yes uh, uh, as you all know uh, then only internet explorer we can't able to do that other than that internet explorer you can able to access in all type of web browser chrome edge firefox opera safari in all type of web browser we can able to achieve this one uh, so this is a browser compatibility it's, uh, it's not a new new thing but uh, it is working in all browser so what are the important points if we are going to declare a clamp or multiply because most of the uh, times we are not using this method because of the confusion of minimum and maximum view both view height and all but in future definitely it will changing the method for the, from the old method to an advanced method so we have to be very careful by selecting some of the units called rem em uh, we have to be very careful by maintaining some uh, some units related to the heading or paragraph it will be changed automatically based on the your design condition so we have to be more careful on that by using uh, and selecting some of the units and some uh, some disadvantage is that we have to be uh, very i mean the line light height to be this want to be some kind of disadvantage we can't able to manage this line height if in the media query because it is in a viewport height so in a mobile and uh, tab first method it will be at some point it will be make trouble but in this uh, uh, but in 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 the current future uh, most of the most of the developers or most of the de most most of the developers are front end developers they are not using the advanced methods here we are not using advanced methods Uh, why? Because means there is really a lot of confusions on that uh, regarding the mean and max width, uh, regarding the media queries changes, regarding the width and height. Mm, there will be a lot of confusion on that. But the later part they have into they have said that it it will be a uh, current refining for the responsive uh, typography. Another than that responsive typography they have also introduced called as a fluid typography. so if you have time means you just step out the responsive typography combined with the fluid typography so together we have worked with responsive typography plus fluid typography means it will be uh, nice to work and it will be a new experience to include it in the project too so next we are going to see about the parent selector hash function so this is also a known thing for all the developers for a hash function uh but uh, but what they have included what features they have included means uh the parent selector uh, first of all the selector which is going to be a subject will it will not accept the hash function so now they have changed it to a hash function the subject the selector will also be as a subject uh so this is the main thing they have changed it uh, from the before uh, hash function as well as the after hash function pseudo code so normally how we can call it as a um, selector structural pseudo code select pseudo code 
so it is named as a selector which can also be called as a dynamic class function so we can see uh, what how they have implemented it and what they have changed and all you can see that so before this has function the subject of the selector always at the end for example the unordered list will be in the list so it is not it is not containing the has function but the it will not see as a list as a subject one we can also we can able to see the unordered list as a subject rather than the selector so in this function you can able to see that uh, list as a subject so this is the main modification they have done so this is the before and after so you can simply see that the parent has a child so it, in in a single uh, sentence it is also able to readable also uh, called the parent has a child so the parent has a uh, one type of selector one side subject it is it is a readable format the so as well as the section has the focus visible so it it is containing something it is it is pointing out something so the parent is pointing out the children so it is related to that so uh, the anchor tag has an image so by using some of the changes we have to make in the css styling means it will be useful uh, what will be if we are using that um, uh, if you are using n number of web components if you are using a small small set but there will be a different a difference uh, there will be a lot of difference uh, in some styling we are including uh, 10 to 15 stylings means another one component we are just going to include as a one come so for that purpose we have to copy the all those uh, elements and we have to paste it. so come so for that we can easily write it in a sentence called anchor tag has an image so it is also a readable format um, it is also understandable uh, once we see those code we can see okay the image is containing an anchor so anchor has an image so we can easily able to link with this right so uh, so this is the example of an uh, code of a hash pseudo code how it is specified in the normal the first set of html you can see the figure containing one set of image another in a figure uh, html tag containing the fig caption with an image source so uh, these two some relatable right the figure containing a fig caption another one is the fig image containing the fig caption these two are relatable so this section has in another example the section has an h2 so it is also be known so the section containing an h2 uh, we can Sign some of the components in that. So under that H2 curly braces under H2, we can omit that and we can use this property by using a hash function. So to style another inside that H2, if we have any other tag also means it is possible to do that. So if in this case a uh, section has an H2 tag, so under the H2 tag is containing an image tag also, we can easily notable in a one line call. section has an h2 element with the, within a image we are going to style this one so uh, it we are going to finish it as a you know, one line property so uh, to include in a large number of lines so this is also one of the advantage they have noted it next one we are going to uh, see about the topic called uh, select mode which is completely uh, new for all the developers or all for the designers because it's going to be implemented in a future uh, why means uh, it is just working in working stage of the chromium it's not going it's not implemented right now it's in the production stage is going they are getting some feedbacks from the developers if if it is in the select menu came to uh, ground if they play means it will be useful useful for developers or it might need some other features to be added and all they are just referring that so what what will be the role for select menu if if it come to the come to the implementation for the developers means uh, it will directly point out to the options so if you are containing some n number of options means we can easily able to denote this kind of particular option and the, another one the second option and then the third, third option we can easily able to define that so we be using a select menu by using some other uh, attribute function we can easily able to modify those button 
uh, as well as the list it may be an anything not only the option it may be a button it may be a list under that list it will be it, it may be anything we can able to customize that so this is the main thing uh, they have trying to introduce in the implementation but not sure whether they are going to be included in the implementation uh, but we can there is a chance of implementation in the 2023 so how it will be like uh, means under the select menu there will be a, some kind of options under that options we are having some sector of classes called some sector of class we can we can uh, include any number any class name so by using that class how we are going to modify it means by using an attribute called part so i'm not familiar with that attributes attribute parts uh, some specifically notifying for the select menu but by referring there are a lot of uh, attributes i have seen that uh, noting for a particular button uh, list uh, for part function they have noting some type of uh, specification for a slot function for a slot attribute they have including some type of function so they have introduced a lot of attributes combining with the select menu tag so it could be a great uh, if they have come if they have introduced it, it means it will be uh, good to implement or you can do uh, in many type of stylings in that options too so if we want to customize that the styling boxes or the background color or if we select your option one to do some kind of animation we can all we can do all those by using the select menu itself it it will be a main thing for an all over the option like that they are going to be planned uh, for the implementation but not sure when it will be under the production so until that we want to be keep trying for these uh, options uh, styling and all uh, we can see how it will be like uh, adding some part attribute or slot attribute uh, like there are many types of attribute also they have included on that uh, let's we have to wait and see that um, in which attribute specifying which type of components and all for example you can see uh, in that b example the part is reading both for button and for list box so like that for a part attribute that will be a slot attribute also so uh, the, the denoting the button or list box will be a uh, different so once it came to the implementation only we can able to know that what type of stylings they are preferring once we add some kind of different attributes mean so before coming uh, let me have uh, get a knowledge some about what this mean by uh, select menu how it's going to be come and all we have to wait and see on that in the later session of 2022 fresh or if the implementation are completed or the feedbacks is get to be ready if that means we can expect in the uh, 2022 beyond itself we can uh, run and execute that select menu component Uh, next, uh, this is the end of session. We have reached and we have thought about the three type of features we have introduced in uh, Google recently I/O. But there are a lot and lot of uh, many features also they have added it. Uh, comparing with the uh, select menu has a responsive typography. There are so many other features. Uh, if if you have a time, means go through that all those uh, colors function means it is obviously new. Uh, completely it will be uh, new for those uh, those uh, developers who are interested in uh, color oriented designers like something it will be definitely new for them uh, as well as some javascript functions uh, small small implementation but it will be a very useful and they are not going to be end up with some uh, two minutes three minutes is going to be a brief discussion if we if we started uh, reading that the uh, state of css 2022 means because there is a lot of lot and lot of information they have added in that section uh, which is completely new for all that time damn sure just completely new new to be all because each and every state they have included in that uh, with an effect containing a layout containing the styles containing the javascript functions containing uh some other viewport with it it all related to that functions it all related to the uh, developers so to styling up an option for the developers it will be a great opportunity and it will be a great thing for a developers to use and play on that uh, state of css 2022 so next slide is these are the resources i have been searched for particularly for state of css 2022 for responsive typography and uh, has pseudo code and select menu 
so please go through those uh, links the state of css 2022 you can see all those uh, components which is listed in the list we can you can see and go through all those uh, features uh, perfectly and particularly they have mentioned that before and after like that scenarios Uh, so it will be very useful to introduce and to learn something new under the state of css means here is the right path under the state of css 2022 uh, we don't know that how it will be in the 2023 whether it going to be a, a part set of 2022 like that but uh, definitely in 2022 comparing with uh, 2022 2023 it will be a great uh, year for the css for an updating the implementation of future so we don't know that how it will be now it will be a future having a has has function as some futures they have implemented in same 2023 also uh, there will be a chance that adding a some more specification so they are adding a some more specification it's uh, it is very useful for the developers to get into that and study for that and if we use it to the real life applications means uh, Uh, it will be very nice for those developers to uh, shorten their time, shorten their code, uh, easy maintainability. Uh, everything it will be as a uh, great step. So that's it for the state of CSS 2022 particularly. So thank you for the session. Uh, we came to us by now for this uh, session. So most important thing we have to note it for and all those uh, developers means the styling what we are going to do is very important. You have to be careful with the some kind of units, uh, some kind of uh, uh, units, viewport with everything. So if we you try to use some uh, kind of new features means it will be uh, very useful for all those uh, developers and all those projects, all those web components. We can easily aim to achieve the Google I/O has introduced some features and we can able to uh, sort out those problems we are facing by us. So we are came to the end of this section. So any questions I can uh, raise up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mega, uh, uh, and thank you for choosing a topic that is so uh, you know so relevant and so new, uh, which meant that you had to actually put in a lot of work to actually be able to bring a session like this for us. Um, I would love to uh, hear from our audience. Uh, we've actually enabled the unmute option, uh, so you will be able to unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, if you want to just type in your questions in the chat window. uh please feel free to do that we've also shared the resources that mega has shared with us uh for for css and um is there anyone who'd like to start off our conversation uh, maybe even by sharing how you found uh, the session how relevant it is for you uh, as a front end developer in any role uh hi mega Hi, Sunil. Uh, yeah, I really uh, understood most of the things you are uh, were conveying through the the latest uh, CSS features. And uh, the one thing I am most uh, what do you call uh, uh, what do you call <laughs> uh, I want is like um, the select box. So for the currently the select box is like we can't customize it properly. Uh, we can't change the uh drop down arrow all those things so introducing the select menu will be a great feature for the web developers and we can actually uh use it um uh, like customizing the uh, select boxes so it is really a good uh, feature by uh for this year i'm really excited to use that yes you, we do are waiting for that sinju uh can expect it by an end or the <clears throat> starting of a 2023 uh, the implementation are going on so we have to wait and watch what they're going to be release on that particular year yeah thank you mega professor thank, thank you pinju thank you pinju um is there, is there anyone else who'd like to um unmute this or please share how you found the session any front end developers would like to or comment on the topic Hi, I'm Mega Adinesh here. 
Hi, hi, Ajnish. Yeah, there are no questions. I just wanted to thank thank you for the great session. Uh, so that that uh, actually uh, briefly uh, added the. I mean, you told the sub features that recently added. That was a really really value addition to the. So at least we can Google for uh, some these particular things. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for. Thanks, thanks, Ajnish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajnish. Um, anyone, feel free to unmute yourself and tell us um, how you found the session. Whether it was useful for you, uh, were you interested? Mm. Hi, Mega. Hi, Vishnu. Uh, hi. Uh, it was a wonderful session. Very informative session. Thank you, Mega. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, what are the different yeah. types of attributes that will support for set meaning? Component other than slow. Mm, other than power, there is a uh, one attribute called a uh, slot, and uh, it is also and under the implementation only. Once we got into the select menu, uh, components only they will list what are the component, what are the attributes we it will accept to the select menu. Apart from part, uh, we can see as a slot attribute. It is also used to specify some of the stylings, both in button as well as the list type. If it is an apart from the part means it will be a slot attribute. Okay, thank you, Madam. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the question, Vishnu. Um, anyone else? Hi, Madam. Uh, uh, this is Nitin. <clears throat> Hi, Nitin. Uh, actually, it's a wonderful session. Uh, especially congratulating you for this uh, uh, selecting these topics because uh, uh, especially this plan. Uh, min max clamp uh, and also the multiply function etc uh, is going to be very useful for the uh, coming years for the uh, front end developers uh, it's good actually if you can show some uh, live demo or something uh, but it's okay but uh, it, it is understandable no problem with that okay. yeah and also i can uh, Uh, the one thing I can point is that uh, uh, now, now, uh, especially in the case of the, the clamp function, min, max, and clamp yes. function. Uh, nowadays, we are using that uh, the combination of uh, in that flex boxes, the combination of uh, flex string and uh, grow it, along with that flex basis. So we set the width uh, using uh, the flex basis and adjust the flex string property to one uh, either one and zero four. Changing the element while we resizing the, uh, uh, the container. So uh, along with the uh, media query, we used to make that uh, make it uh, look exactly like the, the responsive behavior behavior of the web page. So uh, yes. with the help of this uh, CSS min and max uh, clan function, uh, we can easily. Uh, do it with a single line of code. So it is, uh, in my perspective, it's very very uh, useful. Uh, maybe uh, the browser compatibility itself is. Uh, we are getting to browser compatibility nowadays, I guess, uh, since uh, we are the Internet Explorer is already sh shut down. So uh, I guess this uh, these functions may be very useful for us. So. Thank you for choosing this topic, and uh, it's been a nice session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nitin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nitin. Um, I mean, this is what our interactions are all about, right? Sharing your views. How does this topic help you? How you found the session? So, is, um, so is there anyone else who would like to maybe just share how you found the session, or um, we have. I think I can see a lot of front-end developers. Uh, anyone like to unmute yourself and ask a question or? So Megha, do you want to tell us why you choose this topic? Till <laughs> someone else. Uh, why this topic particularly means while searching for a, a new features I have introduced in me. While searching for this new feature itself, uh, we have seen the state of CSS 2022. Then only I can able to uh, know that there is there is a releasing in the release Google releasing has 
each year they are releasing some of the new features still that i don't know which the updates are coming and how those the updates are coming and they don't know so once we searched about that css features only came to know that oh, okay the google has also introducing some of the new features which is also in the year by year they are going to be splitted as a six months six months they neatly they have describing it as a fresh of 2022 and 2022 beyond so they are clearly mentioning it as a new function which is going to be implemented so what are the things they are going to implement on further future studies and all so i i thought it is something new uh, related to related to the developers and also something new features also uh, comparing with the uh, ones we are working right now so only i just uh, fixed on that the state of css 2022 by google I, it's a new to me so only i just choose to introduce this to you all and share those uh, functions and all thank you i i think the topic i think is entirely new to a lot of people um so you know the fact that staying updated uh, you know it's sessions like these that uh, bring us all the information and even start of conversation right it's not just we attend the session but even after the session we're thinking about the things that you shared with uh, us yeah. and you know and each even, year they're going to be updated yeah and and also you've started off reading and you know preparing so much so you're going to you know naturally we want to be updated on this as well um so thank you for contributing so we are all now able to uh, uh, know that okay in each year something new features uh, that google has releasing so that we can able to relate with that So that's the new thing uh, in that. Okay. Um. Is there anyone else uh, who'd like to? Uh, we have Sharad, uh, Joel. I I'm not sure. All of you um are able to unmute Deepak. Anyone? Um. Anish. Srijit. Any anyone wants to share their views or and how you found the session? Okay. Um. So, uh, so, uh, Meeta, what, what would you uh, have to say to people who are just starting out in front end development? You know, any like how you were able to learn and things like how how do you think they should once they are starting off new in this career? Mm, starting to this, uh, the, they want to know little much about HTML and CSS by experiencing uh, the thing we can able to get. It is not for an uh, particular for front end developers. Uh, for all the field, if we get on some kind of experience by practicing uh, those uh, sets of works, means uh, we can definitely go into the that type of uh, job what we are looking into. So what I uh, personally look into the front end development means uh, by practicing and experiencing. So uh, if we do practicing a lot, uh, it it is completely new. Each set of design and each set of uh, styling is completely new for us to design. Uh, so it will it will be more exciting also uh, in how we have to implement these things and how we have to overcome these problems issues in the scrolling many types of issues will come and uh, many types of styling issues will be there many types of solutions also will be there so we have to think accordingly related to the front end developers how to achieve those designs and all. so by practicing and by experiencing we can definitely come stronger in uh, front end development field comparing <laughs> so when if if you are uh, just starting out and uh, how do you showcase your uh, you know your capabilities when you are applying for the first time uh, in a front end development role uh, for the first time means uh, by practicing only uh, by practicing and by by making a mistake only we can able to Uh, understand what is going under the code so if you are not making any mistake you are not making a practice means we can't able to find that how uh, where we have lost and we where we are going to be learn like that so in a simple way by practicing only by practicing by practicing and learning only uh, we can uh, achieve that night to by a first step uh, by practicing and learning only uh, i can come to the that thank you for sharing that um, is there anyone else who would like to share uh, any any last comments or we would be wrapping up soon the audience is okay uh, so please find all the resources it has been shared on chat 
uh, we have a few uh, compliments uh, you know on the sessions uh, people saying very excited to know about uh, the future of css um, you know great session megan thanks for sharing knowledge uh, we have reza Thank saying you. thanks for sharing knowledge. is there someone else who would like to okay so uh, we'll we'll be wrapping up now thank you so much mega for taking your time for us thank and you thank you thank you for doing all of this preparation and i know that you put a lot of work into bringing this very very new topic uh, and you know it, it's it's a big risk that you took <laughs> so thank you for that and um, thank you. you know I, i'm sure a lot of us uh, you know uh, would have benefited and uh, would you like to share how it has been uh, you know taking this session for us Uh, it is completely new under the section also is completely new for me but i tried my best by collecting some of the resources and all because topic also it's uh, completely new for me so to get to into that and to know some what i have just uh, briefly defined what i known and what i discussed with you with you guys so let's see what is going to be happen if we implement those stylings and all thank you mega so i'd like to thank uh, each and every one who taken their valuable time from a busy day to attend this webinar a special thanks to all the participants who have actively participated uh, in our q and a session uh, thank you prinju ajnesh vishnu nitin i'm hope not missing out any names thank you to everyone who has kept the chat window uh, active by putting in your comments on your experience for the session um thank you to all the volunteers of ixtf kerala team that work behind the scenes to make this event happen and we've only just touched upon the topic of state of css i'm sure there's a lot more for us to learn and to be updated every year so please write to us and let us know how you found our session on our social media handles uh, we are on facebook twitter linkedin instagram and clubhouse at the rate ixtf kerala you can also write to us at idfkerala@hotmail.com We have an exclusive IXT of Kerala community on the Interaction Design Foundation website. We hope to see you with another webinar. Stay safe and stay connected. Thank you.